Hi folks, welcome to Fish Trap Reads. My name's Mike Midlow, and this winter we're celebrating a great work of literature together as a community. It's been a book club favorite for years, The Jump Off Creek by Molly Glossen. It's the story of a homesteader and her struggles to settle in the mountains of Oregon. Pick up a copy and join along. It's fun. This week's special program is presented by the National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center in Baker City and is one of many we're offering during Fish Trap Reads to help all of us gain a deeper understanding of the life of an Oregon homesteader. Recordings of these events are available at fishtrap.org and on Fish Trap's YouTube channel, so you can watch them anytime in your classroom, at your library, with your book club, or around the dinner table with your family. Before we get going, I want to say thanks to our Fish Trap Read sponsors, the Book Loft, Community Bank, Oregon Arts Commission, and Pacific Power Foundation. Okay, let's go. Today's special event is titled The Fur Trapper's Cabin. You're about to take a step back in time and into a fur trapper's cabin, plus learn some history of Oregon's fur trapping trade. Ranger Casey Taylor is your guide today. He is coming to you from the National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center, where he specializes in fur trade, historic weapons, gold mining, and early agriculture in Eastern Oregon. Please welcome Ranger Casey. Getting to the point, I can't sit around and drink a cup of coffee and do chores without somebody showing up. About a month ago, I was Working on a trap line, the gal come riding up on a piebald mule trail and some goats. Well, come on over. <clears throat> well, that's what I do. I run cattle up here and I market hunt and trap for the locals around here and market hunting okay well market hunting is I go out and I hunt fresh meat to the gandy dancers down there giving and dunking well I guess you don't know what a gandy dancer is that's railroad workers down there that build track call them gandy dancers because when they walk pack and rail they look like a bunch of gandy geese walking around kind of funny looking really this year wasn't a bad haul. Got Alaskan sable. Some folks call it a skunk. It's kind of hard when you get down there to Baker City and say I got a skunk pelt, but call them Alaskan sable. Market's a little easier. Baker City's the best place to sell furs. They give you a good square deal down there. You get ermine. That's just a winter short-tailed weasel. Pick them up in summer too. Well, get a little closer and you can take a look at them. These are the money ones right here. These usually make up your trim on them fine ladies' coats and the grace the royalty and the princesses over there in Europe. Carcachu, some folks call them a badger. Again, market names. Best thing about these, that makes you a good liner on your coats. Now, this one's your money. You know what that is? That's beaver right there. My grandpappy started trapping out here back, back in the 30s. They did more trading back then. He traded with Cayuse. HBC, that's a Hudson Bay Company, they give you six English pounds for one of these. They traded more for the plues back then. And you don't know what a plue is? So we clean the dirt off, get them all cleaned up, and bundle them up into 100 pounds. That way we ship them down the river back to St. Louis and sell them that way. They traded more for them back then. I'm getting a little bit of that in a minute. That's a beaver. This is your made money. Had a lot of them out here, like I said. HBC done trapped them all out. They did what was called scorched earth. They didn't want us free trappers out. So 
So they got them all out of here for us, but they're starting to come back. Then these little varmints right here. Anybody got a cabin? Guarantee you find one of these. Miss Trillinger moved up here. That's that gal that had that piebald mule. It was all right. I got about four or five of them out of her cabin in two weeks. You get one of these around, say you buy your chickens too. Now, that there's a river on it. These are getting scarce. These are naturally waterproof. Make a raincoat out of these. I can take this down to Baker City. I can turn around and sell this for $12. That's about a month and a half's worth of wages right there. Said though, they're getting hard to come by. This little darling, she's pretty. She bobcat. This is going to end up down there on some lady's coat. Make a nice collar for her. Maybe her hand wrap. It's big money down there in Baker City. They're getting, do you know they're getting dresses from Paris, France out of there? This will look nice and pretty wrong with that dress, wouldn't it? Now, these little darlings. It's a red fox. I seen a silver fox not too long ago. I'd love to catch that one. We're about three, four times what this one is. You always tell a fox, because you look at where the end of the tail is. My grandpappy always said it's like taking a paintbrush, put the tail on the paintbrush. That's how you tell them the difference from the coyotes. Yeah. That little darling's right there. Good money's always at the milk companies too. I'm making a mess over here. Now, if you're looking to buy Zell kites, these are just good money too. You make all kinds out of these, good saddles, blankets, and so forth. Personally, I like trap still. I'm not one of them wolfers. They go out and they bust a man's cattle, put a round in it, and they cover it with strychnine. Cattlemen's Association put a $6 bounty on the head of them, on the ears of them wolves. What they do, they go out, put around in one of them wool, or them beef cows, not theirs, but in them smaller ranchers. So they cover it with strychnine, the rest of the critters come along, eat off of it, fall over dead. So it affects my job too, in these smaller ranchers. Let's get back to talking about trading here. I was talking about my grandpappy. He taught me. They used to trade back in the day. Back when the tribes were still around. They did fair trades. Fun thing was, HBC come in. They wanted to trade whiskey and wampum. Kites didn't want to do that. So they'd show up, sit down and go to trade. They'd say, well, we want your copper pots. We want your butcher knives. We want them glass beads. Not just any glass beads. He said they had to buy Venetian glass beads, silver bells that were coming out of Germany. Because in Caius was savvy. They knew what they wanted. They'd been trading, they knew. Funny thing was what he told me. See, HBC never caught on till too late. Free trappers, they had it figured out. When the men folk went out, the tribe did the trapping, they brought it back into the lodge. It wasn't his, it was hers. Because that lodge belonged to her. She did all the work on it. She skinned it processed it. She was the one that tanned it. See, Hudson Bay Company wouldn't talk to them. They wanted to sit there and talk to the men folk. They couldn't figure out why 
they go on to trade with all the household items. The free trappers come in and they married into the tribes. And they figured it out. So they started bringing in blankets, started bringing in the knives, all the things that made that life, made her life a little bit easier. See, and they made money off of it. Not just for us, but for them too. Because then she got a little bit better status symbol too. Because think about that. I got a copper pot. I don't have to boil water in the buffalo stomach no more. Kind of those little things that are fun. Now, I bet you're wondering how this works. So this is a leg trap. Now, be careful with one of these. There's two ways to bait them. Either bait or lures. Bait is what you use on a predator. And that's something they want to eat. Now, a lure, that's something that gets their nose working. The lures work best in the water. So if I got a beaver there and I want to trap, I'm going to sit there and catch a big old male beaver, set this down in the water, take a little bit of castor. You don't know what castorium is either. So that's the good smelling stuff that the, that the lady beavers, I'm gonna clean this up a little bit. And the lady beavers sprinkle around when they say they want a little bit of company. You put that up above on top of the branch there, you got this stake too. Male beaver comes along and he sticks his foot down in there. That holds on, he can't get out, holds him there in the water. So I come along. Some folks use a gun, other thing. I don't like to do that because that's one more hole I got to sew up. Just take the back end of your ax here and you pop them in the back of the head. Your bigger critters, you use a nice gig and spear and you poke them that way. It's quick. It's quick. Don't worry. So, baiting wise, you got to get a little bit more interesting. So when you set them, you set it down there in the ground, dig a hole, kind of put the food around there, and you go that way. So if you give me a second here, I'll show you how to set this thing. Best way I was taught to do this, put one foot there on that spring, one foot there on that spring, compress them with your weight, get down there, Flip your catch over. Now your trap set. Now, this thing's actually safe to pick up. And you can see that that trap is actually set. When that critter comes around, it sets on that plate. He's going to be stuck there like that. Now, when I come along and want to get him out of there, I depress my springs, open the jaw, and if that is your leg bone or your foot finger bone, Say goodbye to it. That's why I was always told, use a stick. Because this little thing is about the most unforgiving piece you're ever going to find. Trapping. Don't pay near as good as it used to. I like to do it. Pays well enough. Get these wolfers under control, we can maybe make a go of it. I got cattle to go check. Then wrote to Miss Trulinger's place. Help her out up there. So I guess I'm not totally opposed to having somebody stop by for a cup of coffee. So you're welcome to it. If I'm not here, at least throw the 
put the pot on and get one started for me by the time I get back. So y'all have a good one. Thank you, Ranger Casey. Join us next Wednesday at noon where you'll get a visit from Sarah Sherman from the National Historic Oregon Trail Interpretive Center. We'll talk about a woman's role in the 19th century American West. You won't want to miss it. Thanks for joining us with this special Fish Trap Reads event. Learn more at fishtrap.org.